In the 17th century, Australia began to take form on maps. This began with its discovery in 1606 by Willem Janszoon, and its further exploration by the Dutch throughout the century. But the idea of Terra Australis, which we established in part one of this series, is not Australia, was still hanging on. What would eventually be named Australia was named New Holland, and was seen as a separate continent from Terra Australis, though they could possibly be connected. But there was another southern landmass that connected to Terra Australis on 16th century maps that may throw the belief that Australia wasn't discovered until 1606 into question. Let's go to raremaps.com, which I often treat as a map encyclopedia. I'll search for Australia. Take a look at this map. It looks like Australia is starting to take shape. But as you may have noticed, the map was drawn in 1541, over six decades before the official Dutch discovery. Some believe this to be proof that Australia was discovered before 1606, and the most likely candidate isn't the Dutch, but the Portuguese. And that is the topic of this video. Maybe discover is the wrong word. People had actually lived in what would later be called Australia for 50 to 65,000 years before Europeans found it. Another group that are ethnically and culturally distinct from the Aboriginal people arrived 2,500 years ago from what is today Papua New Guinea, and settled in the islands of the Torres Strait and the tip of Cape York Peninsula. Maybe rediscovered, or found, or even reconnected would be a better way to put it. But anyway, let's look at some of the biggest arguments made and pieces of evidence found that may support the Portuguese finding of Australia before the Dutch, and you can decide for yourself who you think found it first. We'll start with that map I showed you on raremaps.com. But first, let me provide a little more context. In the early to mid 16th century, the English and the Dutch were yet to build their famously powerful navies and trading companies. The Spanish and the Portuguese at this point in time ruled the seas. But the Portuguese were right on Australia's doorstep. Less than 500 kilometers away, they had discovered and established a presence on the island of Timor. So if a European power did find Australia in the 16th century, this would make Portugal a likely candidate. Now back to that map. It's one of a series called the Dieppe maps, which were world maps and atlases produced in Dieppe, France in the 1540s through the 1560s. Many Dieppe maps used the Portuguese language, which had led many to believe that map makers were using Portuguese sources that no longer exist. But Portugal had a strict policy against sharing newly acquired geographic information, so it has been assumed that Portuguese cartographers were bribed for the information. And one of those possible discoveries was, of course, Australia. But if it was Australia, it was named Java La Grande. Java La Grande has its origins in the stories of Marco Polo. Polo wrote, Departing from Zayamba and steering between south and southeast 1,500 miles, you reach an island of great size, named Java, which according to the reports of some well-informed navigators is the largest in the world, being in circuit above 3,000 miles. It is under the dominion of one king only, nor do the inhabitants pay tribute to any other power. They are worshippers of idols. Polo learned this information from natives in Sumatra. The idea that it could be attached to Terra Australis, or was even separated by just a narrow strait, was confirmed in 1505 by Italian traveler Ludovico de Vartema. He wrote that it extends almost beyond measure. If the Portuguese found land in the area, they may have assumed they found the Java La Grande that these two men spoke of. Take a look at this 1547 map of eastern Java La Grande. North is at the bottom of the map. Some believe its coastline resembles Australia, while others believe it's a little bit of a stretch, such as this inlet, which could be Botany Bay, and this point, Wilson's Promontory, though it would have to be turned at 90 degrees to match up. And there are islands that some say resemble those of Australia. As you have probably noticed, there are many place names on this map. So if this isn't Australia, surely they are located somewhere else and not completely made up. But this is still a mystery. But just as abruptly as Java La Grande appeared in the 1540s on the Dieppe maps, it disappeared in the late 1560s, having little influence on cartographers outside of the city. There is another map that once appeared to prove Portugal's discovery, or at least another visit, but in 1601 only five years before the Dutch. It was discovered in 1859 by a man named Richard Henry Major, 
who was the British museum keeper of maps at the time. With Java La Grande, called Java Major, and now separated and further north on this map, there is still a large southern landmass. The text reads, Nuka Antara was discovered in the year 1601 by Manuel Godina de Aradia, by command of the Viceroy Ires de Saldana. But this map was only a copy made in 1630, which Major admits. And after thoroughly reading Aradia's writings, Major realized that Aradia had fallen ill and never made the planned voyage from the island of Sumba to Nuka Antara, and so he retracted his original theory. It's likely that the natives from the area had already been sailing to Australia, and this is where the information came from. Eridia's servant did go to Nuka Antara in 1610, but this was of course after the Dutch. There is also an atlas that may be a hint at Australia's earlier discovery, though it's not actually one of the maps, but the title page. The page depicts four animals, a horse representing Europe, a camel to represent Asia, a lion for Africa, and a fourth animal, possibly to represent a fourth continent. I asked all of you in a community post and on Instagram what you thought this animal looked like, and most of you said a kangaroo. This was in an atlas by Dutch cartographer Cornelis de Yoda, but it was published in 1593, again before the official discovery of 1606. But it's unlikely the Dutch discovered the continent before 1606, as it would have probably been well documented. Of course, this may not prove much, there are other marsupials in the region outside of Australia. There are also some artifacts that some believe point to a Portuguese discovery, one being a wrecked ship from the 16th century, three to six kilometers south of the city of Warrnambool. But the evidence that such a ship existed is a little shaky. There are many documented accounts in the 19th century of seeing this wrecked ship, but the accounts vary in detail, leading some to believe there were actually multiple ships. There have also not been any reported sightings of the ship since the 1880s, and the details provided were not enough to know its origins. Author Kenneth McIntyre talked about this theory in his 1977 book, The Secret Discovery of Australia. He believed the ship was part of a secret expedition that set out from the Spice Islands in 1522 to look for Marco Polo's fabled Isles of Gold. It would have been kept secret since the eastern part of Australia, even if undiscovered, would have been disputed territory with the Spanish, as a treaty clearly defining their territories in the Pacific wouldn't be made until 1529. This area would then have clearly belonged to the Spanish. Portuguese explorer Cristóvão de Mendoca is recorded as having been tasked by Portugal's king with sailing out in search of Polo's treasure islands, but there are no records to prove that the voyage actually took place. There were also keys found in 1847 by an amateur geologist in the port city of Geelong that McIntyre believed had been dropped by Mendoka or one of his crew members, but the keys were lost and their origin was never verified. But why are we even having to speculate? Why after all of these years would the Portuguese themselves not be able to provide clear evidence that they did in fact find Australia in the 16th century? Subscribers to the theory explain the disappearance of this knowledge by an earthquake and the subsequent fires in Lisbon in 1755, in which the records would have been destroyed. But who knows, maybe one day documents will turn up in an archive that will settle the long debate. But until then, we are mostly left with a handful of maps and lost artifacts. So what do you think? Did the Portuguese find Australia before the Dutch? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. But before I end this video, thank you to RareMaps.com for giving me high definition images for many of the maps you saw in this video. RareMaps.com is an online antique map shop, but as stated earlier, I use the information that is provided on each map for a lot of my videos. On their website, you can purchase your own antique Australia map. They have the Java La Grande map I showed you in the video, and also many New Holland maps. Again, that's RareMaps.com. I've left a link pinned in the comments below. And thank you to my few Patreon supporters. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more geography videos. Thank you for watching.